Previously, we saw the differential form of mass conservation. Now let's take a look at the corresponding integral form of mass conservation. I'll go back to the channel flow and I have flow coming in here and flow going out there and I will denote the mass flow rate crossing any surface as uh, by m dot and for steady flow we can we intuitively know that the mass coming in should be equal to the mass going out because there can be no mass accumulation here that's you know with the steady flow assumption and if we write that in terms of the mass flow rates we can say that the mass flow rate out should be equal to the mass flow rate coming in and that's you know that involves um, the assumption that the flow is steady. First let me take a look at the scenario where I have uniform velocity coming in and uniform velocity going out. This is the simpler scenario and let me also say that the you know the velocity at the inlet and outlet is perpendicular to the surface. And then so the the mass flow rate going out will be equal to density times the velocity at the outlet, the uniform velocity, times the area of that outlet, which is going to be this, this length times some, you know, I can assume unit distance perpendicular to the screen. So I'll say S out. Similarly, the mass flow rate coming in is going to be rho V in S in, so this is the area of the inlet. In this case, the areas are the same, so this means that the velocity going out should be equal to the velocity coming in. And we can understand this, you know, this expression uh, intuitively because if I increase the density, then there's going to be more mass flow rate through that surface. If I increase the velocity at the outlet, then there's no more mass flow rate through there. But if I increase the area, again, there's more mass flow out through there. So one can understand that intuitively. Let's move on to scenario two, where we have non-uniform velocity at the outlet and inlet. So this is what you're going to have um, in most cases. And not only that, let me say that, you know, if I had a differential you know, surface element here, the velocity at any particular um, location like that is not perpendicular to the surface. I also define an outward normal at the surface like this, and then I can define, I can uh, write out what is the mass flow rate going out through that tiny, you know, surface area ds. That's going to be rho. Now v dot n is going to give me the normal component, which is the only one that's going to affect the the mass flow rate times the surface area, which is ds. And then I have to add up the contributions for, you know, for, for these differential elements throughout the, um, throughout the outlet surface. And in the limit as ds tends to zero, that's an integral. So I have to integrate over the outlet surface, and that's going to give me m dot out. And correspondingly, m dot in is going to be the same thing. So I define a ds here and some velocity there. It can be in any direction. And the outward normal now is, is in that direction. And that's over Sn. And one thing to note is that now, you know, this dotted with that will give me a negative number. So this is going to be negative. So the nice thing about this form is that it automatically accounts for the sign. It'll say, hey, you know, if the mass is going out, it'll be positive. If the mass is coming in, it's going to be negative. And in fact, what's done is you can integrate over a closed um, uh, surface area, okay? So if you define that as my control volume, um, and then you integrate over this, the, the surface of the, the, that control volume, which is called a control surface, you will get rho v dot 
n ds over that surface. So here, you know, that surface is going to be that rectangle. So when I am um, at when I when I do the integration over here, I'll get that term. When I do the integration over there, the velocity is zero, so I'll get zero. When I do the integration over here, I'll get that. And when I do the integration over here, I will get z get zero. So that's going to give me the net mass flow out, and that has to be zero. Um, and if you know we are assuming incompressible flow, so density can be um, brought out of the integral, and you know you can take that out. And so for incompressible flow, you don't even need to consider the density, and you'll get v dot n ds for any surface is equal to zero. And so this is valid for any arbitrary surface that I can draw within the within my control volume. So the exact solution is going to satisfy that for any surface, and it's also going to satisfy du dx plus dv dy, pardon me, dy is equal to zero. The finite element solution is not going to satisfy the integral form for, or the finite volume solution that we'll do in ANSYS Fluent, is not going to satisfy the integral form for any surface within the, um, within my, you know, uh, within my flow domain. It's going to satisfy it for certain surfaces which I define through my mesh. And we'll look at that in the big ideas in CFT. Let's extend this discussion to the integral form of momentum conservation uh, next.